Now, Syria has begun the destruction of its chemical weapons. With international inspectors now overseeing the process, the elimination of the toxic arsenal comes in accordance with a binding UN resolution that was spearheaded by a Russia-US agreement. RT's Middle East correspondent Paula Slier is in Damascus for us and joins us live. Paula, do tell us what progress has already been made with the chemical weapons. Well, the United Nations has confirmed that chemical weapon experts inside Syria have begun the process of destroying the estimated 1,000 ton chemical weapon stockpile inside this country. There is a team of some 30 international experts who have been inside Syria since last Tuesday. They come from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons in The Hague, as well as the United Nations, and they are overseeing the whole process. Their role is to verify, report, as well as observe what is happening. But the actual destruction itself is taking place by Syrian forces. In a statement that was released by the international experts, they said that on Sunday, these forces had begun destroying missile warheads, as well as aerial bombs and chemical mixing equipment. The Syrian forces are using cutting torches as well as angle grinders to destroy the munitions. Now, the whole process is taking place at an undisclosed location, but it will last until at least the middle of next year. This follows a binding UN resolution that came into effect after the involvement of Russian diplomacy. We're still hearing, though, from the United States that if both sides, being Damascus and the rebels, don't adhere to their commitment and actually destroy these stockpiles of chemical weapons, force could still be an option. The important point to make is that the observers have said that the Syrian President Bashar Assad is uh, adhering to his commitments, but as of yet there has been no indication, no kind of comment or confirmation from the rebel side that they will be doing the same. And this is important because a number of these chemical weapon stockpiles are actually in the hands of the rebels. At the same time, many of them are on the front line, so they're changing hands. Sometimes they're in Assad's forces, sometimes they're not. And it poses a number of problems. Firstly, how will these international experts actually reach the front line where they can observe the destruction of these chemical weapons? And secondly, whether or not it's in fact the intention of the, of the opposition forces to destroy these stockpiles. So a lot of problems, a lot of possible uh, encounters further down the line that the international experts will have to deal with. But certainly the process, at least from the Damascus side, has begun. All right, Paul, thanks very much indeed. Certainly a lot of issues to be ironed out there. Paul is Lear, they're reporting from Damascus. Now, there is, of course, an enormous amount of work still ahead with the demolition of Syria's chemical arsenal, as our correspondent just mentioned. So let's see what kind of scale we are looking at. Well, Western intelligence estimates that chemicals are stored at about 45 sites across the war-torn country. Damascus, however, declared that only 19 sites contain toxic stockpiles. Well, seven of them, according to the Syrian government, are located in combat zones and could be difficult to access. And as for the production facilities, there are believed to be four of them in the country. All of them are near sites, near cities rather, where fierce fighting is often reported. That's homes, Hama, Latakia, Aleppo, and all chemical production sites have to be demolished by the 1st of November. Well, all in all, Syria is estimated to have about a thousand tons of chemical agents. They include mustard gas, sarin, and nerve agent believed to have been employed in a deadly assault near Damascus in August, as well as blistering agent and VX nerve agent. Well, previously, Damascus also said the opposition might be in possession of some chemical weapons, while the UN resolution requires both sides of the conflict to give up their toxic agents. Some experts believe the rebels would be reluctant to comply. The opposition is very disturbed because they were banking, and this applies to all sections of the opposition, um, even those sections uh, like the more religious extremist groups who loathe the United States were hoping for an invasion, which, uh, which they could then use to take the country and then fight each other, like is happening in Libya. Uh, but that hasn't happened. Whether sections of the opposition are going to disrupt 
the inspectors from uh, taking off, disarming, doing whatever they're doing to the chemical weapons, I don't know. Wouldn't totally surprise me if some section from within them tried to create a provocation and then blame it on the government, because they were very upset when no war happened. Now, serious compliance with the U.S.-Russia brokered resolution and progress in the destruction of the chemical weapons has been hailed by Russia's foreign minister and his American counterpart. Sergey Lavrov and John Kerry met on the sidelines of the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit in Bali. RT's Paul Scott is there for us. Confirmation that came that disarmament of Syria's chemical weapons stockpile has already begun. It was only 10 days ago that the United Nations unanimous, unanimously passed a resolution on Syria's chemical weapons stockpile. And U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry says that it's a record-breaking process to get to this stage so soon. And Russian's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that Damascus is fully complying with the international community. During all these weeks after Syria joined the Chemical Weapons Convention, Damascus has been working jointly with the international inspectors. We hope this will continue on in the future. While well, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry also says the Syrian government deserves credit for the so far smooth process. Now, it had been hoped that U.S. President Barack Obama and Russian President Vladimir Putin would have been able to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting on the fringes of this economic summit. However, of course, President Obama was forced to cancel his trip to Asia because of the ongoing financial problems in the United States and the continuing shutdown there. His place has been taken by Secretary of State John Kerry, who says that Washington now believes there is no military solution to the conflict in Syria. We agreed, again, that there is no military solution here. We share an interest in not having uh, radical extremists on either side of any kind uh, assuming a greater uh, status or position in Syria. And that is why we recommitted today with very specific uh, efforts to move the Geneva process as rapidly as possible. Now, it was undoubtedly a productive meeting between the two sides, with Kerry saying it's been the most productive meeting in recent months between Lavrov and himself. And attention now turns to the possibility of a Geneva II peace conference, where it's hoped that both the Syrian government or representatives of the Syrian government and the Syrian opposition will sit round the table for peace talks. Sergei Lavrov says that he can get a delegation from the Syrian government from Damascus around the table in mid-November. That's the anticipated date for these talks. And Kerry says he's hopeful that he can do likewise with the Syrian opposition.